The mysteries behind successful fund appeal letters no longer have to be closely held by a seasoned few. Watch this video to learn what makes for a winning appeal letter. Without a doubt, this past year has been challenging for many in development and fundraising. But the one bright spot has been the response to direct mail fund appeal letters. That's right, the old fashioned snail mail letters to donors. Many nonprofits are seeing double digit growth in direct mail response. Our organization has seen a 47% increase in direct mail responses over the same time last year. Now this could be attributed to a number of factors. People were cooped up for a year and didn't have anything better to do than read your letters. People had stimulus checks that they wanted to use to give back to others who are less fortunate. But whatever the factors, those letters did well because they included some key elements and I'd like to share with you what those elements are starting now. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase income and become fully funded. If that sounds like something you'd like to be part of, subscribe to this channel and be part of a growing group of nonprofit leaders taking their income goals to the next level. Element number one, the hook. Every great letter has a phrase, quote, or pull quote that immediately grabs the reader from the outset. It draws the person in from the beginning. It's just enough words taken from the story to grab the attention of the reader. And it's a direct quote that makes people want to know about the story they're about to read. But the hook only gets you so far. If your letter doesn't include a second element, it won't keep them reading. And that is a compelling story. The best kind of story is one told from the perspective of an individual whose life was altered or changed for the better as a result of the organization's involvement in their life. The best stories include quotes directly from the individual. I was headed down the road to disaster. Drugs, alcohol, and other addictions had such a firm grasp on my life. I never thought I would get out of it until, until I met Mary Jones at XYZ Recovery Center. The story could be told from a third person's perspective, from that of Mary Jones or another staff member, but it's always best to be told from a first person perspective. A great story describes what someone's life was like before getting involved with your organization or staff member. What specifically the staff member or organization did to alter or impact the life of that person for the better and what their life was like after meeting the organization. The more details, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the more the reader will be able to relate to their life and see how dramatic the change was. Every nonprofit organization has started to solve a problem, whether that be eliminating homelessness, curing cancer, or doing the or ridding the world of human trafficking, understanding that a problem exists is a key element. I recently heard a story from the perspective of a woman who was caught up in human trafficking. She was abused as a child as a result of a family friend, and even though her mother got her out of the abusive situation, she and her sisters then became easy targets of those pretending to want to help and be friends. A young man befriended her in school and at first showed love and compassion towards her, until one day he started asking her to do things that were uncomfortable. Soon she found herself pulled into the life of the sex trade business. It was a sad story and my heart hurt for her. But then she heard of a ranch that sheltered women who were battered and abused, especially those caught in the human sex trade business and with the help of a friend, escaped to the ranch. There she found a loving and caring environment with people who were generally interested in her best interests. After years of recovery, she now helps other women caught up in sex trafficking and provides a way out for them and an escape. That story could have been told by a third person, but it was so much better and more compelling told by her. A story like that could be long, but most letters only allow for a few key paragraphs. So get to the meat of the story quickly, how the organization played a role and how the person's life was changed. The next element, number three, is the connection. How does that great story connect to others like that person? How does it connect to the reader? In the story mentioned above, we'll call the person Susie. You could say in your letter, Susie's life was permanently altered for the better by XYZ Ranch. But there are hundreds of like Susie who need your help. That's where you come in. The letter then goes on to explain how the ranch needs the resources to continue with its efforts. 
Perhaps they are currently full. Perhaps there's a waiting list to get in and there is a need to build a new wing or even a new facility to house these ladies. That brings us to element number four, the cost and the opportunity. Using the same example, share how much that new wing or new building will cost and the opportunity for the reader to help impact a life is available through their gift. Presenting specific numbers for the completion of the project or the cost of the phases is essential. People need to know the total amount desired. That brings us to the next element, the ask. However, simply knowing there is a need or an opportunity doesn't help people come to the conclusion that they are the ones who can help meet the need. The letter needs to include a very specific appeal. Will you consider a gift of $1,000, $5,000, or even $10,000 today? Specific amounts guide people to an understanding of what is desired of them. Don't assume they know how much you expect them to give. I made that mistake early on in my career. I expected a gift of $25,000 for someone and got $100 because I was too afraid to give them a desired amount. And by giving them a deadline like today or by December 31st implies there's a sense of urgency that you aren't just hoping that they'll do this sometime in the future. Element number six, the expected outcome. For people to really be moved to action, the letter has to include the expected outcome or desired results. Using our earlier example of the ranch that provides shelter for victims of sex trafficking, the desired outcome is that we provide shelter for another 25 women. Now, you may have thought that the outcome would be a new wing or a new building. In a way, that's true. But the shelter is not the outcome. Getting women out of a dangerous and life-threatening situation is the outcome. Don't make the mistake of selling the steak instead of the sizzle. A bloody raw piece of steak sitting in a meat counter is not attractive. But take that steak home, throw it on the grill, listen to the juices sip and drip into the fire. That makes your mouth water. In this case, the building is the steak. The sizzle are the women who are rescued from a life of slavery. Look for the sizzle in your appeal. Every successful letter includes the hook, a compelling story, the connection, the cost and opportunity, the ask, and lastly, the expected outcome. These don't have to be mysteries to you any longer, and now you know how to move a prospective donor to an occasional donor or an occasional donor to a frequent donor. By incorporating these elements, you'll also have successful appeal letters. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or use the email address developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you. Thank you.